tickets need to be treated as goods that at the very least, if I buy a ticket, I should be able to give it to you if I want to. Uh, and then uh, I have Or no, mandated, whatever. Uh, yeah, well, yes, exactly. Hi, I'm Matt Welch for Reason TV at Freedom Fest in Las Vegas with an old friend of Reason, Andrew Langer. Andrew heads up the Institute for Liberty. Yeah, IFL is a is an advocacy organization based in D.C. We focus on American exceptionalism, crony capitalism, property rights, and uh, right now doing a lot of pushing back against what we see as the rise of tyranny in America. Uh, crony capitalism, what are you uh, pointing at? Well, one of the issues we're working on right now, one of our, our favorite issues is this thing, fan freedom. Uh, it's the idea that uh, uh, folks have property rights inherent in tickets to concerts and sporting events that they buy. Uh, and the fact is that you have a, a lot of big actors in the marketplace who have used the power of regulation to feather their own beds and are in fact trying to restrict your ability to give your tickets to someone else or to sell them at either a profit or a loss on a secondary marketplace like uh, StubHub or Craigslist or what have you. Now, some of the teams are like blocking out stuff. Hub, is that what's happening Absolutely. here? Absolutely, they're trying to create their own secondary marketplace and insisting that you go through them, that you use them, and and trying to enforce it by uh, well by creating what are called restrictive tickets, which is where you have to show up at the venue with your credit card and photo ID. So if you can't uh, if you can't go to a game or you can't go to a concert, uh, you are frankly SOL. Uh, is that legal? I mean, can they create a contract? Well, it, it, you know, what it is is that over the last hundred years or so, uh, tickets have uh, been considered contracts as opposed to goods in the marketplace. Huh. Contracts of adhesion, uh, as you know, as we all know, contracts generally are accepted to actually be negotiated by both parties. Uh, but we think that it's a legal fiction that, uh, you know, whose the reasons for it uh, decades ago don't hold now. The tickets are very hard to counterfeit today. Uh, that's one of the reasons why they had them. There were also there was also a racial component where venue owners and operators wanted the uh, the right to kick people out uh, if they weren't the right color or ethnicity. So it was you know it's one of those things where these legal fictions were created. Whereas now there's really no need for either of those. We certainly don't want folks to be able to kick out because of the color of their skin or their country of origin. Uh, and frankly, the anti counterfeiting measures are uh, are. are uh, they work very well. So we think that good that tickets need to be treated as goods, that at the very least, if I buy a ticket, I should be able to give it to you if I want to. Uh, and then uh, I have Or no, mandated, whatever. Uh, yeah, well, yes, exactly. Uh, or uh, and, more to, and more to the point, if I want to sell it, I should be able to choose the venue on which I want to sell it. See what's happened. It used to be a very shady practice, right? You used to go down to a venue, there's a guy on a corner sure. in an alley. Now we had this very vibrant marketplace. The technology has been able to match willing buyers with willing sellers. We now have a, a real reflection of market value in tickets. And uh, uh, frankly, the, the big ticket agencies, they don't like that. They don't like, they don't want to have to adapt. So what they do is they want to use the power of government to destroy their, com their competition. That's fundamentally wrong. How is government getting involved right now and what are you doing to, uh, to beat back? Well, one of the ways, uh, you know, there was a, a big uh, a flap in Tennessee. Ticketmaster went into Tennessee. Uh, they wanted to have legislation out there that would enshrine their right to engage in this restrictive ticketing and sort of enshrine their ability to control their own secondary marketplaces. We went in there and said, no, no, this is wrong. This is crony capitalism and it's worse. The, the problem is that if there were real competition in venues, if Ticketmaster didn't control 80% of market share, uh, then it wouldn't be such a, you know, the, if there, the, then we wouldn't have such a problem. There would be, uh, there would be different modes that were coming out there. But what happens, Ticketmaster, not only do they control the ticketing, they own Live Nation, so they manage venues, they manage artists, they're, it's all sort of up and down the food chain there, and it squeezes out the ability of anybody else to get in there and have true competition. So the only way you have real competition is through secondary marketplaces like StubHub and Craigslist. So we want to make sure that those entities have the opportunity to develop fully. And if any, listen, anybody knows, if you go to a, a venue that is managed by Ticketmaster, it is a very difficult, kludgy process to buy tickets. You go to Sub, StubHub, You've got a great model for doing business. You can pick your seats. You can pick this. You can pick that. You can see where you're sitting. Uh, you can get a view sometimes of where you're sitting. Um, you know, rather than adapt to that, they want your Ticketmaster wants to destroy it. Awesome. Free the tickets. It's about time. Andrew Langu, thank you for doing the uh, Lord's work for Reason TV. I am Matt Welch.